What is lepton generation? Each generation has a charged and unchanged arg particle. In first electron and neutrino, in second muon and muon neutrino, in third tau and tau neutrino. Why do water waves break as they approach the beach? Water waves rarely break, or form white caps. When they come in contact with a cliff or mountainside shoreline. Waves only break as they approach a gradual decrease in depths, such as a beach. A shoreline with a gradual decrease in depth will produce more. Spectacular white caps than a wave that encounters a steep decrease in depth. The reason waves break is the result of the way the wave velocity depends on the depth of the water. Consider a water wave with a large amplitude. As the wave moves toward the beach, at first it travels at a constant velocity. As the ocean depth begins to decrease, the bottom of the wave gradually encounters more and more friction with the beach. Causing the lower part of the wave to travel slower than the upper part. As the lower part slows down, the crest, moving faster, moves over the trough. When there is not enough water to support the crest, the wave breaks or forms a white cap. What is the Global Positioning System, GPS? Consists of 24 satellites in 12-hour orbits that broadcast their location and the time the signal was sent. A control system that keeps the satellites in their correct orbits. Sends correction signals for their clocks as well as updates to their navigation systems, and a receiver. How can you describe the motion of an object in a gravitational field? As long as the force exerted by a gravitational field, such as Earth's, is the only force on an object, then Newton's second law can be used in the form A equals F slash M inertial. But the force due to the field is given by F equals M gravitation alg. And, as has been tested by experiment and explained by Einstein's theory, Minertial equals M gravitational, so A equals G. There is one more thing to question. The acceleration A is measured in meters per second squared. While the gravitational field strength is measured in newtons per kilogram. What famous scientist was placed under house arrest for agreeing with Copernicus? Galileo Galilei, 1564-1642, was responsible for bringing the Copernican system more recognition. In 1632, Galileo published his book Dialogue concerning the two chief world systems. The book was written in Italian and featured a witty debate among three people.
one supporting Aristotle's system, the second a supporter of Copernicus, and the third an intelligent layman. The Copernican easily won the debate. The book was approved for publication in Florence but was banned a year later. Pope Urban VIII, a longtime friend of Galileo, believed that Galileo had made a fool of him in the book. Galileo was tried by the Inquisition and placed under house arrest for the rest of his life. All of his writings were banned. Galileo was also famous for his work on motion. He is probably best known for a thought experiment using the Leaning Tower of Pisa. He argued that a heavy rock and a light rock dropped from the tower would hit the ground at the same time. His arguments were based on extensive experiments on balls rolling down inclined ramps. Many scientists believe that Galileo's work is the beginning of true physics. What are dead spots in auditoriums? Poorly designed auditoriums can have dead spots. Dead spots are places where destructive interference occurs from the interaction of two or more sound waves. For example, a soloist on stage sends sound waves into the audience. Some of the waves hit the walls of the auditorium, while other waves travel directly to the listeners. In some situations, a direct wave can destructively interfere with a reflected wave so they cancel each other out at that particular location. As a result, the listeners seated in those particular seats would hear nothing from that soloist. Someone sitting a few seats over from the dead spot, however, might not experience the destructive interference and would hear the soloist just fine. Refer to the chapter on sound for handy answers dealing with acoustical engineering. What is a wave velocity? Depends upon the material or medium in which it is traveling. What is a Nexrid? Next generation weather radar relies on the Doppler effect to calculate the position and the velocity of precipitation. What is an anti node? Locations in a standing wave where there is the largest amplitude caused by constructive interference. What is ultrasound? Ultrasound is a method of looking inside a person's body to examine tissue-based and liquid-based organs and systems without physically entering the body. Ultrasound systems direct high-frequency sound, usually between 5 and 7 MHz, into particular regions of the body, 
and measure the time it takes for the sound wave to reflect back to the machine. By analyzing the pattern of reflections received, a computer can create a visual representation of the interior of the body. Dolphins can detect frequencies of between 110 and 130,000 Hz. Their hearing is over six times more sensitive than that of a human being. Ultrasound is sometimes used instead of X-rays because it does not use ionizing radiation and thus is safer for the person being examined. Obstetricians use ultrasound to examine the progress and slash or problems that a fetus might be experiencing. Ultrasound is also used to observe different fluid-like organs and systems in the body such as the nervous, circulatory, urinary, and reproductive systems. Ultrasound can also be used to pulverize kidney stones. In this application very intense, tightly focused beams of high frequency sound are directed at the stone. The stones are shattered and the small pieces can be passed through the urinary tract with little or no pain. What is the System International, SI? The International System of Units Based on the meter kilogram second, MKS, or metric system Speed of light in a vacuum, C. Two hundred and ninety nine million seven hundred and ninety two thousand four hundred and fifty eight kilometers per second. How can infrasonic sounds provide early warning of tornadoes? Using sound sensors that detect infrasound, scientists discovered quite by accident that the spinning core or vortex of a tornado produces sounds that are a few hertz below the human bandwidth of hearing. The tornado, much like an organ pipe, produces low frequencies when the vortices are large and higher frequencies when the vortices are small. Since the infrasound waves from tornadoes can be detected for up to 100 miles away, they could help increase the warning time for tornado strikes. What were the implications of Ersted's discovery? The fact that moving charge in a wire could create a magnetic field created a great deal of excitement and enthusiasm in the scientific community. A week after hearing about Ours Ted's discovery, French physicist and mathematician André Marie Ampere, 1775 to 1836, gave a presentation at the French Academy of Sciences that extended Ours Ted's experiments and contained detailed analyses. A day later, he found that two parallel current carrying wires would either attract or repel each other depending on the relative directions of the currents. Amper's greatest contribution, 
however, was the mathematical theory he created for electricity and magnetism. British chemist and physicist Michael Faraday's 1791-1867, philosophy led him to search for connections between phenomena like electricity, magnetism, and light. In 1821 he invented what is now called a homopolar motor. One end of a wire was suspended from a support so that it could swing in any direction. The other end of the wire contacted a pool of mercury. When Faraday put current through the wire the end in the mercury traced out a circle. The force that Faraday had observed wasn't formalized until 1891 and then by the Dutch physicist Hendrik Antoon Lorentz, 1853-1928. called the Lorentz force law is proportional to the current through the wire, the magnetic field, and the length of the wire. The force, which is perpendicular to both the current and the magnetic field, is strongest when the current and field are at right angles. This force is the basis of motors and many other applications. When Faraday published his results he failed to give credit to two other important scientists and he was given assignments to work in other fields. Nevertheless he continued to do experiments on the effects of magnetic fields. For example, he found that when dense glass was put in a magnetic field, the direction of polarization of light going through the glass was rotated. He spent 10 years searching for ways to create a current from a magnetic field. Finally, in 1831 he tried changing the magnetic field and made the crucial discovery that an electric current is produced by a changing magnetic field. The current a flow of charges, is produced by an electric field exerting forces on the charges. Faraday went on to invent the dynamo, an early electric generator. The American high school physics teacher Joseph Henry 1797-1878, made the discovery at almost the same time. What is thermal physics? Thermal physics is the study of objects warm and cold, and how they interact with each other. It is difficult because most of the vocabulary dates from the time before scientists understood what makes an object hot. Terms like heat, heat capacity, and latent heat suggest that warm objects contain some material that depends on their temperature. As was discussed in the chapter on energy. It wasn't until the early 1800s that our present understanding was developed. Yet, almost 200 years later, our common usage is based on earlier ideas. Where is the longest bridge in the United States? The longest bridge in the United States, a SUS pension bridge ranks as the sixth longest bridge in the world. The Verrazano Narrows Bridge is between Staten Island and Brooklyn, New York.
This bridge, completed in 1964, spans 1,298 meters, 4,260 feet. The span between the towers of the Mackinac Bridge that links the upper and lower peninsulas of Michigan at 1,158 meters. 3,800 feet, is shorter than that of the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. But when measured by the distance between the cable anchorages it is the longest. Bridge in the Western Hemisphere The length of the entire bridge, shore to shore, is 5 miles. How is the pressure of a gas similar to liquid pressure? The pressure from a gas, acts the same way liquid pressure does. One difference between gaseous and liquid pressure is that gases are about 1 slash 1000 as dense as liquids and therefore apply less pressure. The second difference is that gases can be easily compressed while the compressibility of liquid is very small. What technologies have developed as a result of superconductivity? Superconductors are most commonly used in large electromagnets. With no resistance, once the current is started, it will continue forever without change. Therefore the magnets dissipate no power and do not heat up. These magnets are most often used in magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, machines. An MRI allows a doctor to view the inside of the human body without using harmful radiation. They are also used in particle accelerators that reveal the fundamental structure of matter by smashing the nuclei of atoms together. The most powerful accelerator is the Large Hadron Collider, LHC, in Switzerland. Another application of superconductivity is the squid. Superconducting quantum interference device, that is an extremely sensitive detector of magnetic fields used in geological sensors for locating underground oil. How do fluids model electric charges? How could these results be explained? Charles Frangois Dufay, 1698-1739, concluded that there were two types of electricity. He named them vitreous, meaning glass, precious stones, and resinous, amber, sealing wax. Silk. Friction separates the two types. When they are combined they neutralize each other. Jean-Antoine Nollet modeled these types as two fluids, each composed of particles that repelled each other. Charging amber gave it an excess of resinous fluid. Charging glass with silk gave it an excess of vitreous fluid. When the two were touched together the fluids combined with each other leaving the objects unchanged argued. Benjamin Franklin believed there was only one fluid. When glass was rubbed the fluid filled the glass. When amber was rubbed the fluid left the amber. 
He called an object with an excess of fluid positive and one with too little fluid negative. When they were touched the fluid flowed from the glass to the amber. Leaving each with its proper amount of fluid. The flow was likened to water in a river. The electrical tension, difference in potential, and electrical current were analogous. To the difference of water levels between two points and of the amount of water transferred. What is nearsightedness? Also called myopia. Allows only objects relatively near the eye to be focused on retina. Images from distant objects are in front of the retina, so they are blurry. What is a dark matter? Matter in universe that does not interact with electromagnetic radiation but does interact with gravity. Comprises 23% of mass of universe. Its composition is unknown. What is a volt, V? Unit of measurement of potential difference or voltage. What is the constant in Coulomb's law? K equals 9.0 x 109 nm2 slash c2. What is the order of colors in a rainbow? The order of colors in a rainbow goes from longest wavelength red on. The outer arc to shortest wavelength blue on the inside of the arc. The full order from outer to inner is, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. What is geophysics? Study of the forces and energy found within Earth including tectonic plates. Earthquakes, volcanic activity, and oceanography. What is a fermion? Particles like quarks, electrons, and neutrinos with half-integral spins. Who discovered that white light could be separated into the colors of the rainbow? By the 17th century glass makers had learned to make gem-shaped pieces that were used in chandeliers. Candlelight was refracted in these pieces. When viewing the candlelight different colors were seen. 
depending on the angles made by the light, the glass, and the viewer's eye. Newton, who was intrigued by the colors that were produced by those chandeliers, decided to examine how a piece of glass shaped as a rectangular prism could create a spectrum of colors. In his own words, in a darkened room make a hole in the window shade of a window. Whose diameter may conveniently be about one third of an inch, to admit a convenient quantity of the sun's light. And there place a clear and colorless prism, to refract the entering light towards the further part of the room. Which, as I said, will thereby be diffused into an oblong spectrum. To prove that the colors did not come from the prism. Newton expanded the experiment by reversing the procedure and forming white light from the spectrum of colors. He accomplished this by placing a lens in the middle of the spectrum. To converge the colors on a second prism in the path of the colors. Sure enough, a beam of white light emerged out of the second prism. How can temperature be controlled? A device that maintains a constant temperature is called a thermostat. A traditional home thermostat contains a coiled bimetallic strip. When the temperature drops below a set point, the strip trips a switch that turns on the furnace. More modern home thermostats use an electronic thermometer and electronic circuits that turn the furnace and air conditioning system on and off. How are standing sound waves generated in musical instruments? Many instruments depend on standing waves to produce their sound. Standing waves are created on the strings of a guitar, piano, or violin, and in the air columns of a trumpet, flute, or organ pipe. The string is caused to oscillate either by plucking it, pulling it aside and then letting go, or by bowing it, where the stickiness of the horse hair on the bow also pulls the string aside and then releases it. In a piano a felt-covered hammer strikes the string, starting it vibrating. In a trumpet or other brass instrument the player's vibrating lips create the traveling sound wave that is reflected when it reaches the open end of the instrument. In a flute or organ pipe that mimics a flute, the player blows air over a hole. The moving air interacting with the hole produces a periodic change in the pressure of the air inside the tube, which creates the traveling sound wave. In a clarinet or saxophone the player blows through a narrow gap between a flexible piece of bamboo called the reed and the mouthpiece. Oboes and bassoons have two reeds separated by a thin gap. The stream of air causes the reed to vibrate. Periodically stopping the airflow and causing the sound wave. In order to change the pitch produced. By an instrument the standing wave inside the instrument must be altered. By changing the length of a wind instrument, or the tension and length of the strings for a string instrument. A different frequency standing wave is produced, which creates a different musical pitch. 
Pressing a key on a trumpet inserts an additional length of tubing into the instrument. On a flute, clarinet, or saxophone a hole on the instrument is covered or uncovered. Changing the effective length of the instrument. On a piano each note uses a string of a particular length. On a violin or guitar the player's finger is used to change the length. Thicker strings have lower pitches than thinner strings of the same length. Increasing the tension on a string increases the frequency of the standing waves, and thus the pitch. What are the strengths and weaknesses of nuclear power? Electric power is produced primarily by plants using hydrocarbon fuels coal, oil, and natural gas. These are usually called fossil fuels and are no longer being created. When they are used up these resources are gone. Nuclear power plants can reduce our reliance on such fuels. Uranium however, is also a fossil fuel. Coal mining has significant environmental costs. Oil is used mostly for transportation. Natural gas is relatively clean and is used mostly for home and industrial heating. Another advantage of nuclear power is the reduction in greenhouse gases, primarily carbon dioxide. One major disadvantage of nuclear power is the cost of the plant and the extremely long time scale associated with obtaining approval and constructing the facility. Costs are difficult to calculate precisely, but nuclear power and offshore wind farms are the Two most expensive methods of generating electricity, while oil from the Middle East is the cheapest. As a result of these uncertainties, factors other than costs are increasingly important. Other disadvantages include the production of nuclear waste that poses long-term dangers to people due to its intense radioactivity. No long-term storage plans have been AP proved. Although underground storage in salt deposits is the most likely method. What is thermodynamics and statistical mechanics? Studies how temperature affects matter and how heat is transferred. Thermodynamics deals with macroscopic objects. Statistical mechanics concerns the atomic and molecular motions of larger numbers of particles. What are resistors? Resistors are devices used in electrical circuits to put a definite resistance in a circuit. Normally they are made of graphite or a thin carbon film coated on glass. Larger resistors are cylindrical and have four color bands that encode the value of the resistance. On computer boards they are tiny, rectangular devices barely a millimeter on. Aside with conductive ends that are soldered to the board. If they are designed to dissipate a large amount of power, they are made of high resistance wire.
What is the coefficient of static friction ms? Coefficient when there is no relative motion between the two surfaces. How is the brightness of light measured? There are two separate systems to measure the intensity of light. The first is a physical system that measures energy or power transferred. The second system measures the effect of light on the eye in other words. How bright we see the light. You are familiar with the what. It's the rate at which energy is transferred. The equivalent unit for light, the luminous power, is the lumen. If you look at the box a lamp comes in you'll find both the electric power it dissipates in watts. W, and the luminous power in lumens, Lm. For example, a 25W clear bulb emits 200 lm. A 100W lamp emits 1720 lm. A 60W halogen lamp emits 1080 lm. Compact fluorescent lamps produce more light for the same power, a 25W lamp is rated at 1600 lm. Light travels at slower speeds through mediums denser than a vacuum, such as air or water or glass. Light travels at about 225,400 km per second through water versus 299,792 km per second in a vacuum. The intensity of light depends on the degree to which the lamp spreads or focuses the luminous power. If the light goes into all directions it won't be as intense as it would. Be from a reflector spot lamp that reflects light to form a narrow beam. The unit in which light intensity is measured is the candela, CD. If a 100W, 1,720 lm lamp could spread the light into all directions it would have an intensity of 137 CD. But, if the same lamp were a spotlight, concentrating all the light into a 30 degrees angle, then the intensity would be about 640 cd. As the distance between the lamp and the surface illuminated increases, the illuminance provided by the lamp decreases according to the inverse square law. Suppose you have a light luminous power of 1000 lm 1 meter, 3.2 feet, away from the surface. If you now move the lamp to 2 meters, 6.5 feet, away, the illuminance would be 1000 lm divided by the distance squared. Or V22. That is, V4 of the illumination at 1 meter. If you move the lamp to 3 meters, 9.8 feet, away, the illuminance would decrease to one ninth the original illuminance. Can the axis of rotation change? A toy gyroscope contains a rotating wheel. If you put it on a stand the axis moves in a circle. Why? The gravitational force pulls down on the center of mass of the wheel. Thus the gyroscope begins to rotate downward. The effect 
of this new torque is to cause the axis to change direction. Precession is also important for bicycles and motorcycles. If the cycle starts to tip to the right, then the rotating front wheel's axis will rotate. And the wheel will turn to the right, helping to keep the cycle from tipping over. How then could atoms last billions of years? Rutherford offered no answer. In addition, as the electron spiraled into the nucleus it would create a smear of all colors of light. But hydrogen was known to produce only specific colors, called an emission line spectrum. What does it mean to say that water seeks its own level? The surface of water placed in a single container, a glass or a bathtub or a lake, will remain at the same level relative to earth on both sides of the container. Adding water to one side will only make the entire level uniformly rise. There can never be one section of the glass or tub or lake that is at a higher elevation than another section. To understand this fact, consider adding the small cube of water on top of the surface at one location. It would exert a downward force on the water under it. But, because water can flow, water under it would flow outward. Raising the level elsewhere in the container until the pressure is equal everywhere. Water also seeks its own level in other containers. If you fill a hose or tube with water and hold the tube in a U shape, the water level will be at the same locations in the two ends. You can use the YouTube to make a device to show you equal heights at two different locations. You may have a coffee maker that has a water height indicator on the side. This is a small tube that connects to the water reservoir at the bottom. The water level in the narrow tube and the wide reservoir is the same. How do antennas transmit and receive signals? Antennas for radio and television signals are used to either transmit or receive electromagnetic radio waves. Oscillating voltages produced by the transmitter cause the electrons in a metal wire or rod. The transmitting antenna, to oscillate, creating an oscillating electric field that in turn creates an oscillating magnetic field that creates another oscillating electric field. The combined electric and magnetic wave moves away from the antenna at the speed of light. A receiving antenna is a metal rod, wire, or a loop. When an electromagnetic wave strikes the antenna it causes the electrons in the metal to oscillate at the same frequency as that of the wave. The oscillating electrons produce a voltage in the receiver that eventually results in the sounds and slash or pictures produced by a radio or television. What do AM and FM mean?
traditional radio broadcasting uses analog, not digital, methods. AM, or amplitude modulation, and FM. Or frequency modulation are methods of transmitting information on a radio. In each case a property of the carrier wave is changed, or modulated. These variations carry the transmitted information. AM was the first method invented and the simplest to transmit and receive. Edwin Howard Armstrong demonstrated transmission and reception of frequency modulation. In 1935. Listeners were amazed the way that FM eliminated static because noise. Like that due to thunderstorms, changes the amplitude, but not the frequency of signals. The FM receiver's output does not depend on the amplitude of the signal. Due to opposition from the radio networks and receiver manufacturers. Commercial FM broadcasts were delayed and did not become widely available until after World War II. Radios once only had AM, amplitude modulated, frequencies available. Then came FM, frequency modulated, in 1939. Today, there is talk among radio professionals that AM stations might become a thing of the past. What is a Coulomb of charge? A Coulomb of charge is equal to the charge of 6.24 x 1018 electrons, negative, or protons, positive. A Coulomb is a very large charge. Objects that are charged by Rubbing or induction have typically a microcoulomb, 10,6 c, of charge. What is perpetual motion? Forbidden by the second law of thermodynamics. What are the primary colors from a light source? When mixing light, or additive color mixing, the three primary colors are blue, green, and red. Computer monitors and both cathode ray tube, CRT, and flat panel television sets use these colors. The combination of these primary colors results in other colors. And when all three colors are combined with equal intensity, white is formed. What are the limits of human vision? Lower and upper boundaries of light. 4x 1014 Hz or 700 nanometers and 7.9x 1014 Hz or 400 nanometers. What was done to correct the Hubble's vision problems? Three years after the Hubble was placed in orbit around Earth. A team of astronauts from the Space Shuttle Endeavour installed two tiny mirrors. 
that would correct the focusing problems that the Hubble was experiencing. The telescope has since had several servicing calls, the most recent in 2009. Upgraded detectors and spectrometers have been installed. Faulty positioning gyroscopes replaced, and its batteries replaced. The batteries are used when Earth's shadow blocks the sunlight on the solar panels. Since its repairs, the Hubble Space Telescope has aided research into the age of the universe and the rate at which it is expanding and has enabled observation of other stars and galaxies that previously were never seen by Earth-bound telescopes. More than 8,000 scientific papers have been published using Hubble data. Equally important, the beautiful photos taken by Hubble have fascinated the public and broadened its understanding of the incredible range of objects in our universe. Why don't we feel this atmospheric pressure? First, it is exerted uniformly on all parts of our bodies. Second, it is balanced by pressure from the insides of our bodies. We can feel the pressure if you try to breathe in but close your mouth and pinch your nose closed. You can tell that the external pressure on your lungs exceeds the internal pressure. What is a Lorentz force law? Force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. Proportional to the current, the magnetic field, and the length of the wire. Force is perpendicular to both the current and the magnetic field. And is strongest when the current and field are at right angles. Who invented the first telescope? There are a number of conflicting claims for the first person to combine two lenses to see things far away as if they were nearby. The Dutch eyeglass makers Hans Lippershey, Sach Arius Janssen, and Jacob Matthias were some of the first. Lippershey described the design and applied for a patent on October 8, 1608, but was turned down. Copies of Lippershey's device, which was constructed from a convex and a concave lens and had a magnifying power of three, were common in the Netherlands that year. Galileo, 1564-1642, heard about the invention in June 1609, in Venice. By the next day he had figured out how it worked and as soon as he returned home to Padua he constructed one. A few days later he demonstrated it to the leaders in Venice, who in return awarded him a lifetime position at the university in Padua. Over the next year Galileo improved his instruments. And in 1610, using a telescope with a magnifying power of 33, he discovered the moons of Jupiter. The rotation of the sun, phases of Venus, spots on the sun, and mountains on the moon. The Galilean telescope with convex and concave lenses produces an upright image. 
based on the ideas of astronomers Johannes Kepler, 1571-1630, and Christoph Scheiner. The telescope was improved by using two convex lenses separated by a distance equal to the sum of their focal lengths. Such a telescope inverts the image. To achieve high magnifications one of the focal lengths had to be very large. Refracting telescopes proved to be cumbersome and difficult to use. The prism-like shape of the lenses introduced colors into the images that weren't there. This defect, called chromatic aberration, was eliminated 120 years later using a lens made of a combination of two glasses. But this invention did not stop the weight of the large lens from causing it to sag. Creating distorted images. Reflecting telescopes that use mirrors to focus light, were invented by Isaac Newton. 1642 to 1727, in 1668. Today, telescopes, both refractors and reflectors, are relatively cheap. The average person can set one up in his or her backyard and gaze up at the heavens with much better equipment than Galileo or Newton ever dreamed possible. What is the centripetal force? Force that keeps an object moving in a circle. Must be exerted by an external agent. What is a motor? converts electrical to mechanical energy. Current through multiple loops of wires on the armature in. A magnetic field causes a force that results in rotation. How are clocks important to the development of gears? As clocks have improved, so have the gears used within them. The pendulum clock uses a type of a gear called an escapement to drive the pendulum, which regulates the time marked out by the clock. Precision gears allow clocks to use less power and have greater accuracy. How are airplane controls different from the controls in an automobile? Automobiles travel on two-dimensional surfaces, and therefore only need two separate controls. The accelerator and brake to control the forward movement, and the steering wheel to control side-to-side -side movements. Airplanes, on the other hand, travel in three-dimensional space. The forward thrust on an airplane is controlled by the throttle. And the braking is achieved by closing the throttle and increasing the drag, usually by deploying the plane's flaps. Yaw, which is responsible for the side-to-side -side movement of a plane, is controlled by the plane's rudder. To control the pitch, or up and down orientation of the nose. 
the pilot uses elevators or horizontal control surfaces near the plane's rudder. To roll the plane, the rotation of the plane about an axis that goes from the nose to the tail. The pilot uses control surfaces on the back end of the wings called ailerons. The Wright brothers recognized that roll control was crucial to successful flight. They invented a method of warping the wings, creating a primitive but useful aileron. What is the threshold of hearing? Minimum sound intensity that can be heard, 0 dB. What is transparent? Media that allows light to pass through the material. Rays of light are either not bent or closely spaced rays are bent together. What are complementary colors? Pair of one secondary and one primary color that form what is close to white light. What is a sound intensity? Power in a sound wave divided by the area it covers. What is the potential difference? Difference in electric potential or energy difference divided by charge, also called voltage. What are the units used to measure pressure? Pressure is force divided by area. So in the metric system pressure is measured in newtons per square meter, called a pascal, pa. One pascal is a very small pressure, so usually the kPa, or 1000 pa, is used. In the English system, pounds per square inch, psi, is often used. Another unit used is a measurement of the height of mercury in a glass. Tube that would create a pressure that balances the pressure of the fluid. That unit that used to be called millimeters of mercury is now called the tor. Here is how these units compare, 760 tor equals 14.7 psi equals 101.3 kPa. What is a center of mass? Because the force of gravity is proportional to the mass. The center of mass is at the same location as the center of gravity. Who was the first pilot to break the sound barrier?
On October 14, 1947, Chuck Yeager, 1923. Broke the sound barrier in his Bell X-1 test plane, Glamorous Glennis. In order to reach the sound barrier, the X-1 was carried in the belly of a B-29 bomber to an altitude of 3,658 meters, 12,000 feet, where it was dropped. The X-1S rocket engine ignited and Jaeger took the plane to an altitude of 13,106 meters, 43,000 feet. At this altitude, Jaeger was able to break the sound barrier by traveling 660 miles per hour. The X-1 experienced a turbulent set of compression waves just before he broke. Past the barrier at Mach 1.05. Jaeger kept the plane at this supersonic speed for a few moments before he cut off the rocket engine and headed back toward Earth. How do one-way mirrors, the ones used in interrogation rooms, work? A one-way mirror seems to be a mirror when seen from one side. But as a window when seen from the opposite side. Thus the window is disguised as a mirror to allow secret surveillance. Physically, there is no such thing as a one-way mirror. That is, the amount of light reflected from one side is the same as that reflected from the other. The light transmitted in one direction is equal that transmitted in the opposite direction. What is a teleportation? Communicating the state of an atom involving entangled photons. What are the best ways to protect one's hearing at loud rock concerts? The first protection against damage to the cilia is to increase the distance from your ears to the speakers. In plain English, the farther away one is from the speakers, the lower the intensity of the sound. By simply doubling the distance, the intensity becomes one-fourth of what it was originally. That can work in open areas where the sound can spread. But in arenas or halls the sound can reflect off the ceilings and walls and does not decrease with distance. The second method of protecting one's ears is to dampen the sound waves as they enter the ear. Many musicians, both rock and classical, to avoid gradual hearing loss. Now use earplugs to decrease the amplitude of the wave entering the ear. The fluid in the cochlea transfers less energy to the cilia. Than if the listener were wearing no hearing protection. How do rainbows occur? A rainbow is a spectrum of light formed when sunlight interacts with droplets. Upon entering a water droplet, the white light is refracted, and dispersed. That is, spread apart into its individual wavelengths, just as in a prism. 
the light inside the droplet then reflects against the back of the water droplet before it refracts and disperses as it exits the droplet. The angle between entering and leaving is 40 degrees for blue light, 42 degrees for red. What are very high frequency, VHF, waves? Frequency 30 MHz 300 MHz How can these two forces that are so different in strength and range be unified? It only happens at extremely high energies, corresponding to a temperature of 1015 K. Such as occurred in the first few moments after the Big Bang or in an accelerator. They received the 1979 Nobel Prize for their work. What is a greenhouse gas? Gases transparent to light and short wavelength infrared radiation but are opaque to the long wavelength infrared emitted by warm objects. Examples are carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor. What is Maxwell's equations? Four equations that describe the nature of electric and magnetic fields. What is an image, real? Light rays do converge can be projected on a screen. Why do some things tip easily while others are stable? As you can see from the example above. When the center of gravity is outside the base of the object it will tip. That suggests the general rule, it will be stable if it is low and wide. That is, keep the center of gravity low and the base wide. Not only is a larger torque needed to tip an object that is wide and low. But the center of gravity has to be lifted higher for the low and wide object. As a result the work needed to tilt the object is larger. Left, a tall and narrow object can be more easily tipped over. Right, a low and wide object is more difficult to tip. You can see from the dashed lines the amount the center of gravity must be lifted to tip over the object. What is medium frequency, MF, waves? Frequency 300 kHz 3 MHz. What is a megahertz, megahertz, dash 1 million hertz?
What energy transfers are involved when a ball is tossed? If you lift an object like a ball you increase the energy in Earth's gravitational field. Energy is transferred from you to the field, resulting in a decrease in your stored chemical energy. CP62 Suppose you toss the ball up. When you toss it you do work on the ball. Transferring energy from your body to the ball, increasing its kinetic energy as well as the gravitational field energy. Once you let go of the ball it continues to rise. But its velocity decreases as the gravitational field energy increases and the ball's kinetic energy decreases. It reaches its maximum height, at that instant the kinetic energy is zero all energy is in the field. On its way back down it speeds up. So its kinetic energy increases but the energy stored in the gravitational field decreases. While you are not touching it the sum of the kinetic energy of the ball and the gravitational field acting on it is a constant. Energy changes from one form to the other and back again. As you catch it, stopping its motion and thus reducing its kinetic energy to zero. The ball does work on you. But, your stored chemical energy does not increase. When a moving pool ball collides with another one, all or part of its kinetic energy will be transferred to that ball, which is what makes this fun game possible. Are atoms indivisible? Thanks to the invention of the electric battery in 1800 by Alessandro Volta. 17451827, chemists had a new tool to create reactions and isolate new elements. Sir Humphrey Davy was one of the most active and isolated sodium, potassium, and calcium from their salts. But it was his assistant, Michael Faraday, 1791-1867, who most contributed to the discovery that the atom was not indivisible. He found that the amount of charge needed to liberate an element from a solution was proportional to the mass of the element. In modern language the amount of charge was proportional to the number of atoms liberated. It took until 1881 for the import of this result to be realized when Hermann von Helm holds. 1821-1894, pointed out that if elements are composed of atoms, then electricity could be divided into portions that could be called atoms of electricity. George John Stone Stoney named these atoms electrons. But what? Were they? How was the electrical atom the electron discovered? Further advances came not from electrolysis but from studies of gases. In the 1700s and early 1800s physicists used the vacuum pump, invented by Otto von Guericke in 1690. To reduce the pressure in glass tubes fitted with electrodes to allow electricity to pass through the tubes. In 1838 Michael Faraday passed an electric current through such a tube and noticed a strange arc-shaped light starting at the cathode negative electrode, and ending almost at the anode, positive electrode. 
when Heinrich Giesler was able to reduce the air pressure to about 1 slash 1 comma 0 0 0 of an atmosphere he found that the tube was filled with a glow, like the neon lamps used today. By the 1870s William Crookes was able to reduce the pressure to 1 slash 1 comma 0 0 0 comma 0 0 0 of an atmosphere. As the pressure was reduced the glow gradually disappeared. Instead the glass near the anode began to glow. Without air to disrupt their passage, rays of some sort were able to travel from the cathode to the anode. At the anode end they were going so fast that they caused the glass to glow or fluoresce. By coating the glass with zinc sulfide the glow was made brighter. The mysterious invisible rays could be shown to travel in straight lines by placing metallic objects in the tube and finding that they cast sharp shadows at the anode. Because the rays came from the cathode they were called cathode rays. Joseph John, J.J., Thompson 1856-1940, conducted three experiments with Crookes tubes that showed the nature of cathode rays. His first experiment used an electrode at one side of a tube, out of the direct path, which was connected to an electrometer that could detect electric charge. Thomson could deflect the path of the rays using a magnet and follow their path by observing the fluorescent glow on the tube's surface. He found that the electrometer showed a negative charge. But only when the rays were deflected onto its terminal. Thus he showed that the rays consisted of a beam of negative particles. Using a tube with the best possible vacuum. Thomson next explored the effect of an electric field on the rays. He added two parallel metal plates to the tube, connected a battery across the plates, and found that the rays were attracted toward the positive plate and away from the negative one. In his third, and most important experiment, done in 1897, he combined the deflection of an electric field with one by a magnetic field. In doing so he could calculate the ratio of the mass to the charge of the particles. He found that this ratio was 1800 times lower than that of a positively charged hydrogen ion. Thus the particles must be either very light or very strongly charged. He later showed that they had the same charge as the hydrogen ion, and so they were very light. Further experiments showed that the particles had the same properties no matter what metal was used for the cathode or whether the cathode was cold or incandescent. For his work Thomson was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1906. The charge of the electron was measured in 1909 by American physicist Robert Andrews Millikan, 1868-1953. Before Millikan's experiments some physicists claimed that Thomson's results could imply that electrons had an average mass-to-charge ratio given by his experiments. But that they could have a variety of masses and charges. But Millikan showed that all electrons had the same charge, and thus the same mass. What is special relativity? Study of the descriptions and explanations of the motion of objects moving near the speed of light.
What is a half-life? Time when there are half as many decays in a second as there were originally. What is the difference between the umbra and penumbra of a shadow? A shadow produced by a large light source has two distinct regions. The umbra is the area of the shadow where all the light from the source has been blocked. Preventing any light from falling on the surface. The penumbra, or partial shadow, is a section where light from only part of the source is blocked. Resulting in an area where the light is dimmed, but not totally absent. During an eclipse, the region of total darkness is the umbra. No direct sunlight can reach this area, resulting in a total eclipse. As Earth rotates, the Moon's shadow races across Earth, producing the path of totality. Regions on either side of the path of totality experience the Penumbra shadow and see the sun only partially covered by the moon. <laughs>